a bill that passed the House and the Senate unanimously called the Good Dad Act. Snapshots of Bernard Jennings with his son capturing memories, moments Jennings says he had to fight to keep. My son's eight years old now. I didn't become his father legally until January 9th of this year. Really? Ethan is the motivation behind what's being called the Good Dad Act. His child's mother picked him up from school and moved him to another county. Because he is not married to his son's mother legally, Jennings had no parental rights. My name's on the birth certificate. I've, I've been a part of his life since birth. I was there at the birth, but because she decided she was no longer gonna cooperate with me, the law was not on my side anymore. Hi, Dr. Jennings. Welcome to the Anti-Alienation Project. Thank you for having us. I think it's also very important to show the perspective of alienation and unwed fathers. And I'm so glad to, to be having this conversation because this is a topic that I haven't been able to cover yet on my project. So I'm so honored and happy to have you here. Before we dive into the, your story, the Good Dad Act, I have to say I'm curious, first of all, to hear a little bit about who you are. I'm a regular guy, a doting father. I have two two daughters that are older and I have a young son. He's eight now. In my case, I was on the birth certificate. I took primarily care of my my my, my son. Um, one day the mother found out that I was getting married to someone else. She got upset and she came and took him out of his school without my knowledge or consent. I had him in a private Montessori school and I went to pick him up one day and they said, oh, the mother was here. She picked him up. He's been withdrawn. I said, withdrawn? You mean he'll be back tomorrow on Monday? Because it was a Friday. They go, no, she's permanently withdrawn. I said, what about his 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 scholarship? Oh, no, she's, she, she canceled it. I didn't know anything about it. Well, she said she she said that she texted you. She said that she told you. I'm like, she didn't tell me. I picked up the phone and tried to call her. She didn't answer the phone and she had already moved from where she lived. So I didn't know where she lived. I called the mom, her mom, and the mom didn't know. Her friends didn't know. I looked on social media. She was gone. So a month transpired of me not knowing my son was. It was terrible. So I finally was able to get a hearing before a judge on a Zoom like this. And then the judge told me in the hearing, um, you don't have paternity, even though you're in a birth certificate. It doesn't count. The law says you're not legally the father unless you come before the court. And the court gives an order that you're the father. I said, Your Honor, I already did a DNA test. Here's my test. And I had already served it to the court. They say, I see you have a DNA. So you're the presumptive father, but you still don't have rights. We have to have an evidentiary hearing. But before we can do that, you have to serve her. If they're not going to accept service, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to get an attorney and serve her. I said, Your Honor, I had an attorney. We tried to find them. They're ghosts. They put fake addresses in, this, in the court filings. The address is not correct. We had someone go there. They're not there. They're, they're fake address, the appeal box. Just said, Mr. James, nothing I can do for you. Thank you. Have a good day. You have to figure out how to serve on your own. And then she ended the Zoom call. I was like pit of my stomach, like what the heck? But I thought for a minute, the judge kind of seemed like she wanted to help me, but she said the law doesn't allow it. So the problem wasn't the judge. The problem is not the mother. The problem is not even the attorney. The problem is the law. So I immediately shut my computer down and I thought about that that show when we were a kid growing up, the Schoolhouse Rock. You remember that yeah. show? I'm only a bill. I'm sitting on Capitol Hill. That, and I remember that story as a kid singing that jingle. And I sat there and I said, like, I got this epiphany that I can, I can, I can change the law. So I wrote a proposal. And after that, it's been history. Amazing that you did that, that you were able to do that with, I, I can't even imagine what it would be like to not have your child and them taken from you. I have a few questions, if you don't mm -hmm. mind. How old was your son when your ex he was, seven, he was seven at the time and he's eight now this is so so this is pretty recent then yeah yeah it was like last year how long did you go without seeing him during that period of time it, that initial period it was about a month it was about a month i was able to figure out where she was to serve her you probably heard of hurricane ian here in south florida that year the hurricane ian was coming in and by this time, she had gone to the court and filed some domestic violence charges against me, against my fiance, and she filed a domestic violence, violence charge on behalf of my son against me as if I was hurting my son, which was total fabrication. And on those documents in those courts, she didn't tell the truth. She said there was no related cases, that there was no temporary visitation order or anything, and we actually had a visitation order by that time. After dealing with that, on December the 9th of 2022, the judge declared that I was the legal father of my son. Seven years later, I'm the father. I'm like, wow, really? And then 
by that time I had submitted the bill to the legislature, but I never said anything to anybody and say the judge, I just quietly put it through when I was making calls to the legislatures and, and doing things as the December rolled over. And it went through all the committees unanimous, no opposition from any feminist group. The bill was uh, ratified by the House and the Senate unanimously. And then three weeks early, the governor signed it into law. That is unheard of. This past December 12th, I prosaed, I was prosaed. I served with my own attorney in my case the rest of the year. And the judge awarded me 50-50 as per the Good Dad Act. So I have equal rights to, to education, to decision-making. I have my son now every Friday to Friday. So you got your, you got this 50-50 custody because yes. of the act you passed? Because of the bill. Yes. Yes. That's like, wow. You, that's a double <laughs> win. That's, yeah, that's a double win. The bill is so basic in that it says that when a father steps up and there had been a prior agreement where the mother agreed that he was the father and he's signed the acknowledgement form on the birth certificate and his name is on the birth certificate, he has the same rights and responsibilities of the mother. The court should view him as if he was married to the mother, although he's not with the same rights and responsibilities that a married father would have. But takeaways from this bill are phenomenal because one, if you're married and you break up, you can't just abscond and run to another state because then you're considered kidnapping. You can go you can go away on a visit, but you got to come back within 60 days according to the statute. You can go away because you can't stop someone from moving about. But if you're unmarried and you're the father and you take the child away from the mother, you've taken her property. So the judge will get a pickup order for you to bring the child back when she goes and complains to the court. And if you don't bring the child back, they'll put a bolo out and they'll arrest the father. There's a father two, two years ago. He had a discrepancy with the mother. He wasn't married. And he left with his mother to Canada with the child. They stopped him at the border, locked him and his mother up and brought the child back to the mother. I've got to say, I, I've just... I'm just super confused. Um, this, I would think naturally that once a dad learns they have to, you know, become the dad in the eyes of the law, that it should be a signing of a paper, you know, proving you're biologically related. That's that, right? Isn't there like one way they can go about doing this, like quickly and effectively? Almost every state has a different method. Like, for example, there's actually a registry. Uh, in Florida, and a lot of states have a registry that if you know you're having a child, and they didn't t teach us this in high school or college, that if you have a child out of the wedlock, you go sign the registry, because if you don't sign the registry and the mother goes to put the child up for adoption, we actually have an attorney coming on next week to talk about this, that if you the mother puts the child up for adoption, the adoption agency attorney has a fiduciary responsibility to check the registry of that state to see if the child's father has come to register he's a child. And if 90 days goes by, and they do the try to check, then if they move that child to adoption and then you step up later, it's almost impossible to get that child back because you don't have, you don't have rights. You just step up for your rights. So that's one thing. If you had to tell somebody at a high school seminar, hey, guys, if you ever have a problem and not a problem, if you ever have a child out of wedlock, you need to sign the registry. Okay. Something is like alarm ball bells are coming off of my head. Mm -hmm. It really seems as if a child is born, you know, you need to know who the father is. Are women just allowed to say, I don't know, or oh, all I, the I'm time. telling you, or is that allowed? I mean, it, it, not so much that not allowed. Women do it. They they have a child. They don't tell. It's, it's not against the law to do it. She doesn't get reprimanded. She doesn't go she doesn't to jail. doesn't get reprimanded? No, it's not against, it's not, it was not a, not a, a, a law wasn't broken. She It was a moral thing, but it was not a legal thing. I'm really shocked by all of this. They, I'm really glad we're having this conversation because if I don't know any of this, I mean, I'm just stepping into this space and learning more and more every day. But if they're looking out for the best interest of the child, they would press harder on the biological father. Well, if you don't know, if the father doesn't know he has a child and the mother's not telling him, then she's can, she can make whatever claim she she chooses at the time. Okay, so I believe that it is the child's right to have equal access to both parents. To me, this is a no-brainer. I I don't understand and I struggle to understand why anyone would want to deny the child's right to have access to both parents. Can you offer any insight into why do you think some people do not think it is best for a child to have equal access to both parents? Well, well historically over the years, there's something called the tender years doctrine that pretty much laid out for uh, the legal community what is the, what the best interest of a child would be that a, the best interest of a child is that you know historically things have changed in the family before the mother was stay at home majority 
father would go out to work, the mother would take care of the household, take care of the children, and she knew how to do that. It was pretty much interpreted that the father didn't know how to take care of a child. Historically, over time, that has changed where they've sort of eliminated the tender years doctrine, but the mindset and change doesn't come easy for any industry, anything. So that hasn't, you know, partaked fully. It's peculiar for me too, because typically in the legislatures and the senates of the country, men were in control of it, but yet they did this to themselves. They allowed this to happen. Either it was a macho thing that they didn't want to step up and say, I want to take my kid. It just seems natural that the father should be a part of this child as his father. For the Good Dad Act, would bringing in the birth certificate be enough? Yes. What, 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 yes? Yes. For my, the audience listening, targeted parents, former alienated children, how can we impact real change? Is it showing up at the legislature? Is it writing letters? Is it speaking out? What can we do? What would you encourage people to do? It's, it's all of the above, and it starts with all of us on an individual level to open up your minds and your hearts to that the things you may think you know may be different. And if we communicate and talk to one another, if you're estranged from your father or your mother for whatever reason, it's okay to open up that conversation. You're going to open up Pandora's box. You learn some things that you probably don't want to hear, but it's better that you vet it out and put it past you because you hold on to those pains and those hurts. They ride you for a long time and they put you in places you don't need to be. You know, communication is always better to open up. And then on a societal level, get involved, you know. We all have an ability to make a decision to vote when it's time to vote. Some of us don't find it important. Some of us don't vote. Voting is so important. Figure out who your elected officials are. Figure out who the judges are. And when you know it's time to go vote, do a little vetting. Vote your conscience of who you should, you know, get some advice and vote somebody in or vote them out. And then on an activist level, you know, seek out organizations like yours. You have a beautiful organization that you're out there trying to educate people on circumstances that you went through to help so that no one goes through that ever again you may not be able to stop it from happening but you be able to educate some person so when they get older and they're to the position where they're going to have a child they'll know that hey to do this is not the right thing to do not for me or my significant ex person but this child the child is being hurt it's all about you know this tender child that they didn't ask to be here the problem between the mother and the father shouldn't affect them you should be able to deal with that on a professional level and just both love on this kid. I, I didn't even know, honestly, that un, unmarried fathers didn't have rights until you guys reached out. That's yeah. that's so Amazing, um, Amazingly this, listen to this. If a, a man and woman are married in most jurisdictions and the mother, say, steps out with the pool man and gets pregnant by the pool man, mm. that pool man has no no legal basis to file anything in court to ask for visitation or time with the child because the child becomes a property of the married couple. It belongs to them. As long as the married father says, hey, that's my kid, it doesn't matter what the what that uh, pool man says. Even if he, he proves biologically? He, he can go and get a DNA test of his own and sneak a DNA test of the child. And say, Look, I'm the father. He doesn't have standing in court to even bring an allegation. Oh, it's my better. goodness. Yeah, he's barred. I would love to know what you guys are doing. What are you working on since you passed the bill in Florida? And is it possible to duplicate this success you've had in Florida and get the bill passed in other states? And then secondly, how can people support you and your work, which you already mentioned, yeah. but yeah. if you have anything else to add? We've got it in there's different states, Indiana, Iowa, Arizona, Michigan. If you're in a state, you can hear my voice and you're in California, we're looking for those team leaders in Nevada, Texas, Missouri, North Dakota, South Dakota, Washington State. I can go through all the states. Go to gooddadact.com. We, we say six degrees of separation. Everything is two degrees of separation. Everybody knows somebody that knows somebody. Call your friend that you know that has a kid that has this issue and send them to our website. Let them become a member. And then I'll, they'll speak to me and we'll tell them, you know, help them shepherd them through how to how to pretty much become a lobbyist and change the law in their own state. We'll help them do well, it. Congratulations. What you're doing is really important. And for anyone watching, I would please encourage you to go to their website and consider making a donation. This is really important for dads to have a space where you can be supported by other dads mm -hmm. and get through this without honestly commuting because the suicide rate is so high yes. for men right yes. now and yes. it's a tragedy yes. i just heard a statistic from ann silvers yesterday that after a divorce dads are eight times more likely to commit suicide. as i move to the country i'm in these different groups on facebook and i 
and I get at least two or three calls from around the country from a different dad. If I and I get emails and I have to respond to them, and it's a mental health issue with this because you know men tend to hold things in, mm -hmm. and when you hold in your stress or frustration, it builds, builds hypertension, diabetes, heart heart conditions, aneurysm. It's a big deal. And we don't talk about it as men. Women kind of get together and they talk amongst the girls yeah. and all that. We get together. We don't talk about the failed relationship. We're talking about sports. We're talking about money. We're talking about this. We don't talk about these type of problems. We act like it doesn't exist when inside we're burning up. Yeah, you've created the space where your dads can talk about it. So please visit their website. Donate if you have the means to do so. And mm -hmm. thank you so much, Dr. Jennings, for your time tonight mm -hmm. and for your work every day. I am so grateful for your determination, hard work, and this amazing new law. Thank you so much for having me on.